throughout the last several months, I've been primarily using the Six Sigma Sim Racing 6S160 cockpit. It's the company's flagship model, promising top-of-the-line performance at an affordable price. Since they are currently running a promotion and I've received lots of questions regarding my rig, I figured this is the best possible time to give you all my review on it. So in today's video, I'll be telling you all what I like and what I don't like about the Six Sigma Sim Racing 6S160 cockpit. That's a lot of sixes. Before I get started, I should state that the guys over at Six Sigma Sim Racing were kind enough to provide me with all of this gear for review purposes. That said, I'm not restricted with regards to what I can and cannot say, so as always, I'll try my best not to hold back. So with that being said, let's go over some of the features and specs of this rig. The 6S160 is an aluminum profile cockpit made from 40 series aluminum and despite it being the flagship model in Six Sigma's lineup, is quite discreet in design. The entire chassis has a matte black finish and has little to no hints of color or branding. In fact, all of the Six Sigma logos seen on my chassis are stickers which I decided to add on. What this means is that the 6S160 is very stealthy and low-key in appearance. It's not trying to scream, look at me, I'm a gamer, rather it tries to remain subtle and tame. Now, at the complete opposite side of the spectrum, the premium version of the 6S160 is anything but subtle. This version is custom made per order and is essentially a 6S160 but with a completely custom livery. I don't have that version, but I think it's cool so I figured I'd bring it up. Continuing on, the 6S160 is offered with a variety of wheel decks like this front mount option or a more generic bottom mount version among many others. As for the seats, two are currently offered. One is a reclined seat with lots of subtle accents and the other is a GTR bucket seat with a fiberglass shell. I've been able to use both of them and I'm happy to report that they are both very comfortable. The bucket seat, although did get a little hot in those more intense race sessions, kept me snug and with significant padding on both the seat and back rest adjusted to my body nicely. With this one, you lose the adjustable backrest capability of the reclined seat, but in return get a sturdier seat that won't move during heavy braking. On the other hand, the reclined seat gives you that added adjustability and comfort and looks impressive as well. As for the dimensions, this chassis is significant in size. According to my calculations, this chassis measures 138 centimeters or 4 foot 5 inches in length, just under 58 centimeters or about 2 feet in width, and 78 centimeters or 2 foot 5 inches in height. Finally, optional accessories are compatible with this cockpit, of which I'll mention a few notable ones now. With my 6S160 rig, I've chosen to go with what I believe are the most essential accessories. This includes a keyboard tray which attaches onto either side of the rig, a mouse tray, and a shifter mount. Other notable accessories include caster wheels, monitor mounts, and even floor plates, all of which you can find out more about on their website. Other than the mismatched color of the swivel used on the keyboard tray, I don't have any complaints. I enjoy having it and along with the mouse tray on my right hand side, I find them to be absolutely essential. Something that isn't always essential to have is the shifter mount, which is why Six Sigma Sim Racing chooses to offer it separately rather than including it with everything else. While originally I thought this was weird, it makes sense considering a lot of people simply don't have a need for a shifter or handbrake mount and won't want to pay extra for it. Now the shifter mount, regardless of whether you choose to go with it or not, I found it to do an excellent job. It has been compatible with every handbrake and shifter I own and has remained sturdy. As suggested by the title of this video, the Six Sigma Sim Racing 6S160 cockpit is offered at an appealing price point and even more so now with their current promotion. The normal price for this chassis is $900. A pre-assembled model which brings the entire base put together is slightly more expensive at $999 due to the more expensive shipping cost but did save me good time when putting everything together. Now throughout the months of November and December they are offering a 35% off discount on several of their products bringing the price of this chassis 
pricing down to $650. I should also mention that they offer free shipping to North America, which is a positive as well. Now, unfortunately, you will need to purchase the seat separately. Though you can find a third-party seat to attach and use along with this chassis, Six Sigma offers a reclined seat for $300, which is currently promoted down to $240, and the bucket seat for $350, which is currently offered at $280. I usually don't like to announce promotions within my videos as they are temporary, but it is worth mentioning here considering the holiday shopping season and the significant discount. Obviously, more information regarding their pricing and current discounts can be found on their website if you care to know more. And with that said, it's finally time to speak about what I have and have not liked about this cockpit. Starting with the positives, I do give credit to Six Sigma Sim Racing for the look of this rig. As opposed to others which try to be flashy and promote their logo on every part possible, the 6S160 looks clean and discreet, and with an all black finish, I have to admit looks quite cool. It has a very stealthy look to it which is hard to capture on camera but always impresses me in person. The model I received came with the 4160 base of the chassis already pre-installed, which saved a good amount of time putting everything together. This is an extra option which will cost you around $100, which is significant, but I do have to admit that it saved me some time in the build process. The finish and overall quality of the aluminum extrusion parts are also a big plus. I did find them to hold onto fingerprints easily, but other than that, it looks and feels of high quality and very minimal scratches or imperfections were found on the aluminum extrusion parts. Of course, being an aluminum profile rig, the 6S160 will give you the added benefits of more versatility, customization, and adjustability. This will give you the freedom to easily attach anything from wind simulators to button boxes, which is of course a big plus. Also, Six Sigma Sim Racing offers a great variety of accessories, many of which I've found to be essential. The keyboard tray sits off to the side and can be easily moved in and out of place. The mouse tray took less than a minute to install, and the shifter mount has been compatible with everything I've tried with it, which is a lot and has no movement or flex in it whatsoever. And on that note, the same can be said about the rest of the chassis as well. With its massive 4160 aluminum extrusion beams, it is essentially an endgame cockpit that will support nearly anything you throw at it. Using a 200kg load cell brake was no problem as despite how hard I tried to brake, everything remained rigid and intact. And similarly, the wheel plate and beams holding my wheelbase never showed any sign of distress. Now again, I for some reason decided to stand and even jump on it just to confirm. Welcome to Will OC Regret It? On today's episode, the Six Sigma, <laughs> the Six Sigma Slim Racing 6S160. Let's get started. <laughs> okay, the seat is holding me up well. Oh god, how do I do this without dying? Whoa. Okay. Here I am with no hands. I think it passes the test. Now, what if I jump on everything else? Okay guys, I don't know, I don't know a better way to prove it. Please don't screenshot. Oh god, let me get- So yeah, it's pretty damn sturdy to say the least. Now with regards to the seat, I who in the past has criticized sim racing bucket seats, actually found this one to be fairly livable. While it of course hugs you in place, it feels a little more open than others I've previously owned and seemingly gives you the best of both worlds with a cool looking seat that won't make you feel claustrophobic. It also has a lot of soft padding which as previously mentioned did get a bit warm at times but overall did a good job maintaining my posture and remaining comfortable. As you've probably noticed by now, it also has the Six Sigma Sim Racing logos neatly embroidered on the headrest which looks quite nice as well. Finally, the entire seat is attached onto seat rails which will give you that ease of adjustability. When braking very hard, the seat does seem to slightly tilt back but I didn't really notice it nor did it impact my in-game performance. I suppose this is due to the fiberglass shell which doesn't add much reinforcement and the fact that it's bolted onto seat rails rather than to the chassis itself. The flex isn't ideal but again it personally 
personally did not impact me at all. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on the recline seat, which is the other seat currently offered, feel free to check out my review on the Six Sigma Sim Racing 6S80. Overall though, I've had a pleasant experience with both seats and I do think they hold up well to the competition. As for the negatives, I found none of them to be related to the actual performance or capabilities of this rig, but rather to the smaller attention to details. Now, the thing that caught me most off guard was how the seat itself was shipped. It was literally the bucket seat inside a large cardboard box with zero padding, styrofoam, or any type of protective packaging material. This is probably the reason why my bucket seat had some pretty visible scratches on the fiberglass shell, something that shouldn't be the case for a seat that costs $350. I also found the wheel and pedal plate to easily get scratched. Granted, I insert and remove pedals and wheel bases several times per month, but it is something that doesn't look all too good. Other things that don't look too good are some questionable welds that are very visible and the plain black end caps of the aluminum extrusion parts, many of which fell off randomly throughout the months I've been using this rig. My final complaint is the same as what I said in my review on the 6S80 cockpit, and that is that the Six Sigma Sim Racing product pages and website need to be reworked. It currently doesn't give a lot of details about the product, it's using photos that are not one-to-one -to, -one to what you receive, and in general, it just doesn't inspire confidence when spending hundreds of dollars on a product. Other companies have much more developed product pages with close-up shots, videos, assembly guides, and so many more details heavily outlining the rig, something which Six Sigma's website currently doesn't do. I think that with a professionally made website, consumers will get a lot more information with regards to what Six Sigma offers and the features and specifications of their products. As a result, potential customers will be a lot more confident when going through the purchase. Now in conclusion, I've been happy with my Six Sigma Sim Racing 6S160 cockpit. It gives me the peace of mind knowing I will likely never be in need of an upgrade as this will handle even the most demanding gear, and with a comfortable seat, useful accessories, and minimalist styling, it does a great job while staying tamed. In the future, I would like to see Six Sigma fix the small imperfections I've found as well as modernize their website, but once that's done, I think the 6S160 is a serious contender in the high-end sim racing market at an appealing price point. With all that being said, thank you all for watching, stay safe, and have a fantastic rest of your day.